Now that we can set up a single objective and kind of have the bare bones basic layout of what a quest can be, maybe let's look into making a system that can handle multiple objectives in one state in our state tree. So the way that we're going to do that is opening up our quest here. We already can make these location objectives now. So let's actually just duplicate this one and make in our details panel for the asset also a duplicate of this one, which you can't do. You actually have to manually add a new one because it's a little clunky that way sometimes. Let's add location number two and make that type trigger base as well. And then in our location trigger, we're going to get our parameter location two. So that's going to be looking out for that. Now, how do we set something up that only finishes this state and moves on to the next state when both of these objectives are complete? Because if we just go in uh, to here and we simply finish task, that will finish the entire state when any of the tasks are done, which is not what we want. So we want to add a new third task here that's going to be managing all of the objectives above it. So let's go make a new task, state ray blueprint base, and we'll call it STT Objective Manager, which I probably horribly misspelled, but we're not going to really pay attention to that. Enter state. When this state gets entered, it's going to gather up all the objectives that it cares about, and then bind to whenever they are completed. Whenever one is completed, we're going to be checking, hey, are all of them completed? And if all of them are completed, then we'll finish this state. So for that, we're going to need a variable for our objectives, of course. So objectives, which will be of our type quest objective. And we're going to make that into an array because, of course, we're going to be looking at multiple objectives here. So on enter state, we'll do a for each loop over all of these quest objectives, where we will assign to objective finished in the loop body for each and every one of these states. Now, whenever one of these finishes, as I said, we need to check whether or not all of them are finished. So let's make a function for that, and we'll call that check all tasks completed, or finished, whatever you want to call it, really. And that's going to have a singular output of all completed of type boolean. And this is a fairly straightforward function as well. So all that this is going to do is it's going to, again, get our objectives. It's going to for each loop over those objectives. And it's simply going to get the task finished because that's just a variable that that object holds. And this is all that we really need to know. So we'll just go over all these. And if it finds any that isn't finished yet, we're going to return with a value of false. That's going to... Stop the for each loop, and it's going to give us the information that, hey, there is at least one objective that isn't finished yet, so the quest, or at least this part of it, still is ongoing. If it ever reaches the end of this loop, that means that it's never found a task that is not finished, which means that all the tasks are finished. So we'll return a node with the bool set to be true. Now that we have that, whenever we finish any of these tasks, this runs, and we simply check a... Are all of them completed? If all of them are completed, we can then finish this task. Going back to the variables for the uh, inputs here, or the objectives, it's going to be an input, so it's going to be required to be filled out, because this whole thing doesn't make sense if we don't actually like put anything into it. So, with that set up, we can go back into our quest, objectives 1, let's call this state under here objective 2, by the way, and say we have these two location objectives that we create and bind, but then we have our objective manager on this state as well. It is good to put this at the bottom because I am pretty sure that it does execute these in order, so you want to create these objective objects first, which have their like, outputs and we're going to be using those outputs as inputs for this. So in our objectives array, inside of our objective manager, what we can do is we can then just say, hey, look out for this quest objective, and look out for this quest objective. You can also uh, rename these if you want to be like a little bit more clear about what they are. So just right-click, rename, first location, and right-click, rename, second location. So now it will look out for both of these 
objectives to be completed and then move on to whatever uh, our transition says it should do next. So in this case, it would be next state, so it would go over to this one. And when this one is completed, it will go back to root. If you have an objective state that only has one objective that needs to be completed, you very much can also uh, just add one of these managers and only add in one reference to one objective. That's entirely possible as well. If you prefer, you could also update this location objective to have a bool on it where you can say like uh, is single objective and when this is finished, uh, if it is a single objective, you just uh, finish task as well. That way, if you have a singular objective in any given state, uh, you don't need to also add a manager for it because if there's only one thing, there's no real <laughs> managing to be done. So if this is a single objective, uh, just make it instance editable. Default value for that is going to be false, but now uh, we don't need this object's manager anymore. So we can delete this and we can just set this, hey, this is a single objective, don't need to worry about any like managing stuff. This will just take care of itself. And then when the transition uh, happens for this one, we're gonna go uh, maybe like three succeeded. So that actually finishes off the quest. Now, since that is a fairly like basic setup of how these things work, I wanna do a couple of other things in this video as well that don't really like have room for their own videos. And that is going back into our quest giver. I wanna make sure like of one uh, important thing. So BP quest giver. Right now, when we overlap with this thing, it's always going to uh, start logic, which is kind of okay but it also uh, might be a little bit of an issue. It might be a little bit problematic. It might be whatever. What you can do, you can get a state tree. Uh, we can check if it is running at this time, just so that if we already are running it, we don't really want to check on anything like at all, really. So only if it is not already running, uh, do we start logic. If it is already running, we for now just print a string, uh, quest in progress. There's a little something else that we can do, uh, and that is this has a delegate or an event dispatcher that we can bind to. So let's say assign on state tree status run changed. Uh, you can put those words in the right order yourself. It is on state tree run status changed, uh, which provides you in with whatever new run status it has. So uh, this is an enum. So let's put in a switch node for those. And here we can check, okay, so when we start our logic, we now bind to this and we can check, okay, when it stops running, uh, it's obviously not gonna be in running anymore, uh, but we can check if we failed the quest or if we succeeded the quest or if the quest was just stopped for any other reason or if it is now uh, unset, which realistically, it's probably never going to be this last one, but we can check for the quest to have succeeded. And here we can then do something to like reward the player. So for now, We'll just do a reward as a print string. And as you can see, it also has a field pin. So you could use it to, for instance, say, hey, if you fail a certain quest, maybe you get punished. Uh, it's a little bit tricky because the way that I have things set up later down the line uh, for dealing with saving and loading quest progress, uh, sometimes it also does use the field as like a quick fail save to exit out of a quest that it started but shouldn't have started. So keep that in mind, but that is something that maybe uh, you can do some stuff with if you really wanted to. Now, the other thing that I want to do is I want to make something uh, that just starts the next quest when this quest is finished, uh, because that's also relatively easy. So we can go into our uh, quest tree here and make a new blueprint based task, STT next quest. So we can go into our uh, state tree here and make a, a new blueprint base here and we'll call it STT quest manager. This is going to do some other stuff aside from just running the next quest as well. But for now, that's all that we're going to be uh, programming into it. So let's save that. And this is relatively easy. Again, this blueprint is going to get built out quite a lot when we get into the save and like displaying systems uh, for everything. But for now, all we need is a exit state, which is going to have a variable of the quest uh, giver for next quest. So let's call next quest actor, which is going to be type BP quest giver. And whenever we exit this state, because this is going to be on the root state of our quest. So whenever we exit this state, that means that we've finished this quest. We simply 
uh, do this as a validated get. So only if this is actually a valid reference at all are we going to do this. Uh, we'll simply start this new quest, for which we do need to go back into the quest giver real quick and change this from just being BP overlap into being its own like custom event. So we'll call this something like start quest, which will then run on overlap as well. So uh, start quest like this. Uh, but now we can explicitly call it from other places as well. So going back into our quest manager, we can now start that quest. So this is relatively easy, relatively straightforward, but if we go uh, back into our route, we add a task for our quest manager. We make sure that this next quest is an exposed variable. It doesn't need to be an input because it's not required to give it in, uh, but this way we can set our next quest actor if we really need to. And if we do want to do that, what we're going to do is we add that as a parameter, right? So we uh, do this as a BP quest giver type object reference, call this next quest, and then we can bind to that parameter in here. So now when we finish this quest as a whole, it's going to look at this next quest. If it is valid, it's going to tell that next quest giver to start its quest. Up. So let's say we uh, copy this over. We put it somewhere out of reach because obviously this has an overlap at the moment, uh, which we don't want to accidentally trigger. And we say that it is going to be the same quest, actually, uh, that we had before, but this one is going to use different trigger boxes. So that's entirely something that you can do. You can use the same quest tree to just bind to different locations that you want to visit. So let's say that we have... Um, two trigger boxes here for the first quest. So we go quest number one, location, and location two. And then the next quest that we trigger will be this one. And then we have two more trigger boxes, which let's just set those up over here somewhere like that. I'm actually gonna select all of them and make sure that hidden in game is turned off for them, just so that we can see them. So actor hidden in game is turned off. And let's put in uh, back that print string of uh, quest objective. We'll just print its name. Well, actually, we have the uh, get name as well, right? Yeah. So let's print its name when we like actually finish an objective, which means that we do need to like go in and give some names to the objectives here. Uh, that's the downside of reusing these quest trees is that the uh, names and the IDs are actually like baked into the tree itself. So those won't be unique between different instances of using the same tree. So it's a very limited use case, but it is something that is technically possible and like allowed to do. Uh, so walk to location two, and then this one will be walk to location. I think this is just bound to location one again. Yeah. So now you can see if I overlap with these, they don't do anything because nothing is bound to them yet. If I go unlock this first quest and go back, still nothing will happen because they are not active as a quest. However, these will say walk to location two and walk to location one. And now that I've done that, I think I um, have to do this one again. Yeah, walk to location. So we get a reward. We finished the quest, right? And now that we finished that quest, the next one automatically has uh, opened itself up. And now these will actually do stuff uh, where I will be able to finish this quest as well. So just with that, we basically have a functional quest system. There's a lot of work that needs to be done to make this user friendly. Like we aren't able to save any of this data yet or keep any progress, or show any progress or any of that. But the bare bones basics of the functionality at this point exist and you can start designing your quests. But this is all kind of difficult to work with because we can't actually see what we're doing at all. So I think next time before we dive into anything else, we're going to set up a widget that we can just use to like look at what our current quests are and what the progress of those quests looks like. And a very big thank you to all my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help support the channel or get any of the project files in any of my tutorials, there's a link down below to the Patreon page to support me or alternatively as a YouTube member. And of course, an extra massive thank you to my Cave Digger tier supporters, Sergey Thomas and Mauricio Ferrias.
and my cave student Tia Supporters, Oiku and Earl Monsville Erno.